This episode is sponsored by David Davies of Sun Life Financial. For all your financial advice needs, call David at 519-660-6798 or email david.davies at sunlife.com. Book your appointment today and get started on achieving your financial goals. And by Nick Davies, Andrea Davies, and their team at Homology Real Estate Group make the buying and selling of real estate as cost-effective, informative, and straightforward as possible while maintaining the highest level of service. If you want to maximize your home's value, call Homology Real Estate Group today. All righty, Peter. First and foremost, before we get to sports, we're getting apparently a little bit legitimate here. Yeah, we've got sponsors now. That's kind of nice. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty excited about that. We, <laughs> we used to never have any input on in those sort of things, but now, uh, now we got a little yeah. bit of today. So, uh, sure. so we get uh, we get a little bit of real estate, we a little bit of financial advice, which Lord knows we all need. Oh yeah, um, oh yeah. So, uh, and forget me, forgive me if I'm wrong. These are two of you, the guys that take care of you. So, uh, you know, D- David takes care of you in, in in all your finances. Heck of a guy. Yes, and, he is. Uh, and then if uh, if if you ever decide, my financial life has never been healthier since when, uh, since I transferred to David Davies. Uh, David, fantastic! I know I've had a chance to work with him as well. Uh, great guy, and uh, we're excited to have him on board. Uh, Nick Davies and his team over at Homeology Real Estate. Uh, I know they're Peter. I know there's been a certain someone who has, may have talked to you about uh, the real estate game as of late. Uh, does that mean uh, you might be looking for a little bit of real estate advice at some point? Yeah, maybe, maybe, you know, well, we'll see how, uh, how things break down. The easiest part we know is we know exactly who you need to go to. So happy to have Nick and uh, and his team on board uh, with the show as well. Looking forward yeah. to working with, uh, with both of them uh, over the next little bit and happy to have them uh, supporting the show. Um, so first thing is let's get to, let's get to the sporting activity. Uh, yep. Surprise, surprise, you and I are going to talk about hockey because we're in that <laughs> part of the season. Yeah. Um, this is our first conversation post World Junior Hockey Championship. Uh, we get to a scenario where, you know, the last time we talked, we were kind of in the midst of it. Uh, now we're right into, uh, you know, everything's wrapped up, finalized. Uh, a lot yeah. of people said we didn't know if this uh, tournament was going to happen. They made it happen. Obviously, it had some some health blips along the radar. Mm-hmm. The Germany team had some some difficulties. Some of the other teams oh, had yeah. players stay back because of uh, COVID uh, related matters. But uh, how did you feel overall? Obviously, uh, Team USA blanks Team Canada in the gold medal game. Right. Uh, yeah. You as the uh, the most passionate flag waver of the red and white uh, probably were looking to see Canada win the gold, but uh, that was a heck of a gold medal game. It really was. And we got to remember one, a couple of things. We got to remember uh, the kids from the other countries are just as, as nationalistic as our kids are. They're every bit as proud to put their sweater on as we, uh, our guys are. And what's wrong with the silver medal this year? We won gold last year and silver this. That's not bad. That's a one two finish. So, uh, and the Americans played pretty well. They played well enough to beat us. Uh, in the final game. So I, I don't think there should be, uh, you always want to shoot for the top, obviously. But, you know, second place isn't bad. It's not too bad at all. And uh, one other thing, I don't like to see a team go undefeated uh, as our team did until the final game, that is. Uh, I, I just don't, li- I think it's a, it's a good eye-opener for a team to get beat once, as the Americans were in the first game against Russia, but it was a good solid tournament. Everyone spoke glowingly about Canada and Edmonton, the other, uh, uh, the other uh, uh, teams, and it'll be back there next year and Red Deer. Well, and that'll be the interesting thing too. Obviously there's a lot of conversation about uh, as expected, no fans in the stands and how does that play a difference? You know, you know my favorite is the, 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 the Twitterati that uh, has their, uh, they, if you have a, if you have thumbs, you have an opinion, you uh, have a Twitter account, you get your own say, um, you know, Oh, if there was fans there, it would have been a completely different. I'm like, no, there's, no. there's a little bit of energy and emotion there. Yeah. But that American team, you know, my favorite, the thing for, for me, obviously, a lot of attention paid to Zegras and kind of how fantastic he looked uh, for Team USA. Yep. But my favorite part was a lot of people, especially with Spencer Knight in goal for 
for the U.S. And we all know that I'm a goalie fan. So surprise, yeah. surprise, I'm <laughs> making a big deal about goalies. But, um, you know, the, you know, the, just the fact that, you know, he had that first rough game against Russia. Yeah. And it almost felt like a lot of times and a lot of people were kind of saying, oh, had a first rough game. You know, things are going sideways for the state. Spencer Knight, which is you know, obviously a highly rated prospect and went very high in the NHL draft that, you know, oh, he, he's not as good as they thought. Well, looked wow. pretty darn good the rest of the way. And, yeah. obviously, uh, you know, the Canadian net, you know, uh, it, things went extremely well. And that uh, we all know that kind of uh, storied element for Levi. So, uh, you know, it was a scenario where you had two good goalies and it, it, only you know, one of them could win. Yeah. And it was a good game. That's the, it was a good game. game. That's and the we, thing that bugs me. Yeah. We put more shots on their net than they did on ours. Mm-hmm. And we couldn't beat the young lad. So uh, Knight is his name. And uh, he he played a, the game of his life, as you might expect. And so it's 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 one of those things, too, where I kind of say, especially with how much of a, a deal was made of the fact that the Canadian team had, what, 19 first-round NHL draft picks. Yep, yep. It's for me, it's kind of like you like the fact that inside of that week and a half, two weeks, you got to know a vast majority of these names, maybe a couple if you're, you know, an Ontario Hockey League fan, you, you don't tend to pay as much attention to the WHL and then the QMJHL. Uh, how many times did uh, you and I doing a post game show after a night's game and we get a little bit closer to maybe deeper in playoffs? There was a couple of Memorial Cup runs, yeah. you know, it would be that second round where all of a sudden we'd start getting some tweets. Hey, hey Pete and Ryan, what? Who who do you think's coming out of the West? What what kind of what kind of po- you know possibilities are in the queue this year, sort of thing? So, um, you know, maybe you're not paying attention to those kids, but then you know you, you take a look at how many people knew a whole lot about Dylan Cousins coming into the tournament. Yeah. Well, now he's the now darling. Now he's the Buffalo. darling of all Canadian you know sure. hockey fans, sort of thing. And uh, as you say, uh, a lot of people paying attention to the fact that you know he's a Buffalo Saber and he's playing yeah. the Sabers yeah. and got an assist on his first game in the NHL. Yeah. Well. Pretty good, you know, uh, for him. And, and that Stutzler kid from Germany uh, is playing uh, in Ottawa. He played uh, against uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and, you know, he I think he contributed a point or two in that game as well. Yeah. So you, you can't uh, can't really argue too much on that this aspect. So uh, overall, uh, frankly, in a time when everybody could use, and I know you and I were probably exactly the same in this method, it kind of got you. You woke up and you said, is today a, a Team Canada day or not? So you got like a week or so that you were just, you woke up and went, hey, it's a, it's a game day sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, just get yeah. excited to watch it. And that's the way it should be. So Yeah, that's exactly it. And it will be the same next year, hopefully with a few differences. Maybe our life will be back uh, more to normal uh, than, than it, it was during this World Junior. But uh, that uh, hopefully that the vaccines will all be distributed and will all work and we'll get back to life as we knew it. It will be interesting to see what the changes between last year and this year, but either way, it'll be uh, it'll be a fun one to watch as it is. And it was nice to have that little bit of you, as you say, the key word that everybody wants right now, normalcy, and yeah. the fact that at Christmas time we got the World Junior Hockey Championship. Yes, so we did. It was a little bit close to something normal. Yes, um, it was. We got, uh, what, about six, seven days between the end of the World Juniors and the start of the NHL season. Mm-hmm. I know for you, you're mm-hmm. still kind of having a, a, an oddity with this whole, you know, starting up of the NHL in, oh, yeah, in mid-January. <laughs> um, how, how are your feelings now that we're, uh, we're a few games in at least? Have you, have you kind of, has it been a little bit, you know what, I can turn on a hockey game tonight? Yeah, yeah, it has been, Ryan. And, and I, I think I've, I've got a sense, a better sense of anticipation now than I used to have. I mean, you knew that Saturday night was hockey night. Well, now uh, it was, it was put back and put off until the middle of January, as you say. But now you look forward to it because it's uh, well, it's out of the normal, and 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 it's it's something to look forward to. It, it is an attraction. Like the, the fact that the condensed schedule. I know some people are kind of saying, you know, you're, you're trying to pack so much hockey into yep. a succession period. But at the same point, for me, it, it's not terrible. Mainly because no. 
my, as my wife will attest to, she says to me all the time, especially <laughs> right now since the hockey season started, we're we're on the start of the NHL season. The uh, the, the divisional rounds of football are right around the yep. same territory. Mm-hmm. The Raptors were trying to keep attention now because you know I'm the general bandwagon jumper. They win a championship, and all of a sudden <laughs> you're a big Raptors fan. I'll be the first to admit it. Um, so you know you're a scenario where all of a sudden it's uh, well I might uh, I might watch that afternoon matinee hockey game. Then I'm gonna shift over. Here and watch uh, watch some divisional or uh, conference right, round isn't football. it? And then you know, <laughs> then maybe I'll catch the the Battle of Ontario because well, in the North Division, everybody plays everybody about oh, eight yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go on that right there. How much are you loving the fact that uh, you, that you, there is a NHL North Division or Canadian Division, as some were calling it? The NHL calls it North Division. All Canadian teams all playing against each other. I said years and years ago on radio and TV that we why not why not have a Canadian division? I mean it's it's exclusive, but but I mean and we could easily expand to ten teams, no question of it. I said this: uh, we've got a rink in Quebec City that that's already there. Uh, Hamilton's rink, uh, maybe I've, a little. I've been to that rink in Quebec, the Videotron Center. It is spectacular. Yes, it is, and and the fans, uh, of course, uh, are just as spectacular. Uh, Hamilton, uh, with a little remodeling, their rink would be fine, and then you could either go east or go west or stay in in Toronto for a tenth team. I don't think there's any question we could have a ten team division. And uh, our own, our own setup, our own league. If you want, I would. I, I've advocated that for years. I would be if I had to pick or choose whether it went west or east. I think I would go east, mainly because those Eastern Canadian, you know, you're you're you look at like the Halifax Mooseheads or you know those kind of thing, those yeah. kind of fan bases and that kind of thing. Eastern Canadian hospitality mixed with love of hockey. Yes, mm-hmm. please and thank you. <laughs> but, but Brian, the, the big thing will be an arena in either Regina or in Halifax or, or, or in New Brunswick, uh, wherever you want to locate it. Uh, it's got to be a, a, an NHL rink, and, and uh, therein lies the problem. I would be interested because I think if you get push comes to shove, I think uh, they might be able to find a way to do that. Especially I think if, so. I think uh, you could if you wanted it bad enough, mm-hmm. then you could find a rink. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, someone out there has got an awful lot of money, and uh, out there uh, in the east, I mean, has got an awful lot of money, and and they could uh, perhaps finance a rink. Perhaps. Well, you know. And there's there, there's talk of Canadian, you know, CFL football going out there and building yeah. a football stadium and that kind of thing. So I think obviously there's there's that passion for uh, Canadian football out in the East Coast. And there has been they've done some exhibition games and so on and so yeah. on. But, um, you know, just the factor of, for me, as you say, you know, even even when the, the NHL came out with those retro reverse jerseys and the uh, and the the Colorado Avalanche went with that kind of their coloration mixed with the uh, look of a Quebec Nordiques jersey. Yeah, uh, that just riled people up yet again. To be <laughs> like, yeah, Wait a second. Let's get somebody into Quebec. And so uh, it'll be interesting. We've got uh, we you know, we moved Vegas came in. Seattle's on the horizon. Uh, it will be interesting to see if there is anything more coming of it. But back to the North Division. Okay. How are you feeling about the uh, the fact that I know you said you advocated for this for a while. Yeah. Uh, is this a scenario where you like the fact that uh, we know that all the Canadian teams are only playing against each other yep. uh, um, this year for the purpose of obviously, you know, border security matters and so yep. on and so forth. Yep. Um, do you like the fact that uh, would you want it to see it continue where it's just Canadian teams playing against each other? Or is it one of those scenarios where you kind of say, I like the fact where you, you play six, seven games against uh, against you know, certain other opponents. But I got to think the NHL is going to want, uh, you know, Mr. Crosby and, uh, and Mr. McKinnon and so on and so forth. And yeah. the bigger, bigger names that are playing for some of those teams down in the States. You're going to want to see those teams once or twice. It's like for me when the Blue Jays have, uh, you know, when they have certain teams that don't make it up to uh, Toronto very yeah. often. Uh, you know, you want to see the Cubs come up every now and then because that Rizzo Bryant combination isn't too bad. So uh, for me, is it a scenario where you like to see everybody play against each other and then maybe you meet in the playoffs or do we see a little bit of a adjustment there? Well, you, you know, and hey, people in the States want to see Mitch Marner play and they want to see Austin Matthews play and uh, Johnny Tavares and uh, except in New York. And I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with 
Connor McDavid. <laughs> sure, that's right. They'd like to see him and uh, Dreisaitl too. But anyway, uh, uh, I think if you're going to have an NHL, then you've got to have the mix, the, the, the mix as it was. Uh, but maybe on a reduced basis, if you follow what I mean, we'll yep. have a, a heavy accent on the Canadian teams playing against the Canadian teams. And, uh, well, once in a while, you'll, you'll play the, the other divisions. And that, that's the way it used to be. That's the way it was. And you, sometimes you didn't see uh, uh, teams from, uh, from uh, like, you know, uh, like uh, the, the name you mentioned, Sidney Crosby. Mm-hmm. He didn't get into uh, uh, Alberta every year to play against either Edmonton or Calgary, but and then when he finally did make it, then uh, it was quite the thing. It was a cause celeb. But uh, but anyway, yeah, I think in that situation you go maybe uh, you know it'll be it's a lot easier for me to yeah. say seventy thirty split than yeah. to try and yeah. make thirty two teams all mingle together. But uh, for me, it's also the same as you know university football here in in you know in Ontario sort of thing. You. You got ten teams. You only have eight games to play, so you you miss a couple teams every yeah. now and then. But it's yeah. hopefully it makes it a little more alluring for the next time they come around. The next time, uh, it's you know you want to get out and watch them, and and because they're only going to be in here once, and you want to watch them. Okay. I am a fan of this Canadian division setup, and I know they've done it for you know limiting their it, people's interactions and so on and so forth. This baseball style schedule of two and three games in a row against each other loving every minute sure. of it. Sure, so am I. And and uh, what's wrong with that? I mean, uh, everyone said, well, they can do it in baseball, but we can't do it in hockey. Why can't you do it in hockey? I mean, the teams are already there. Uh, the, you know, play two games, play three, and uh, see how it breaks down. How many? I uh, like it. Uh, you, you get a little bit of a uh, little rile up in the end of a first game. It uh, steers into a second. Uh, sure. It might make it a little bit tougher for the officials, but uh, you know what? Yeah. For them to figure out that's their job you know that's their job if they say uh the same team is playing each other twice it's it's something new ryan it's mm. it's we've never done this in hockey very very seldom even in the old six team league i mean uh toronto would play host to detroit on saturday night and then the next saturday hey there's four other teams that can come in here why are you having detroit back two saturdays in a row that's just the way it worked out and it was accepted, and uh, away you went. The only thing I'm thinking as a, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I'm kind of giving away my fandom here. I don't think it's much of a surprise. <laughs> the only issue with an all-Canadian division, it's a little tougher for me to see the Red Wings, although it's kind of, <laughs> at this point, some weeks and some nights, it's a little tough to watch the Red Wings. Yeah, but we're, well. We're, we're on the upswing. The, the leave it to Stevie in. Y. Leave it to Stevie Y. He'll do something down there in Detroit. We, we rode him on in on the white horse from the airport yeah, when they uh, hired him, and we have full confidence as a Red Wings fan nation. You betcha. Uh, so, sir, let's uh, let's transition. Obviously, uh, we, we'll talk a little bit afterwards, and you've got a, a fun story to throw in afterwards, too. We'll get to that after. Uh, but our guest of the week, we mentioned officials. Um, we talked about uh, the fact that uh, you know the World Juniors was was a success. Uh, the one interesting thing was all of the uh, all the linesmen and the referees all were of Canadian uh, you know natives, and it was uh, it was done so that you know you didn't have to worry about you know international travel and so on and so forth. Oh, uh, that's right. We got a chance to check in with London's own Carter Sandlack, and for some folks, and I know for you, it's a, a name that is. Very familiar, um, yes, Carter is. having played uh, in the Ontario Hockey League, uh, a couple, uh, some stops in uh, Plymouth, Belleville, and Guelph, I believe. If I was yes. three, yep. I'm going off memory periodically, as we yep. all know that is. Memory's good. Memory. Memory's good. Guelph, Belleville, then Plymouth. Now, before we get to talking to him, he was uh, he was one of the referees that were in the the bubble in Edmonton for the World Junior Championship. Actually, ended up uh, refereeing in the gold medal game, which was uh, I know we'll we'll talk to him and get his uh, thoughts on that. But uh, you know, uh, first and foremost, before we get to talking to him, Pete, what are your your memories of Carter Sandlack as a player in the Ontario Hockey League? Yeah, very uh, very good memories, and of course, his father Jim. He played in the NHL and he played his junior hockey here in London after a trade with Kitchener. Uh, and uh, Jimmy always uh, brought me up to date. I covered him when he played for the Knights. He always brought me up to date uh, over uh, Carter's decision to go 
uh, into the officiating part of the game, and then where he was and what he was doing, that kind of thing. But I, I thought uh, it was, he was a good kid when he played. He was very aggressive, and and uh, you know, and nothing stood in the way of him and and the other team's goal. He was very aggressive that way. Had that good sandpaper effect, yeah. and then as uh, if you take a look at that stat line, as uh, usually happens in junior hockey, you start a little lower, and then all of a sudden it just steams up a little bit and then he uh, had that big final year uh, in junior hockey as well and then went on to uh, play in uh, professional ranks in the mm-hmm. AHL uh, and the ECHL so uh, definitely a good a good career there and then uh, as you'll hear he uh, he decided to uh, like most players do you say do I continue playing uh, this game and in, uh, in the, at this level or do I make a change and uh, he, he decided to make the change to officials before we get to him Pete how many times have you heard uh, this doesn't seem like, in my mind, a very often story of uh, of going into, you know, we've heard of a handful of guys make the move into officiating, but usually it's usually it's coaching, it's, you know, becoming part of a front office and that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, not not a, a lot of people heard of players going in the officiating room. No, but there's been some, a few, and, and one of the other uh, most notable is Corey Sabret, uh, who uh, is working uh, in the NHL uh, right now. To this day, uh, he was a, a defenseman with the uh, London Knights. He was a first round pick and then he was traded, uh, uh, obviously to Guelph. And that's where he uh, got into, uh, got into it with, uh, with, uh, Carter. Uh, they became buddies and, and, uh, he, uh, well, you're, I'm not going to steal the thunder of Carter. Uh, he'll tell you that story, that story, but, uh, uh, it, 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 it happens. It's happened before and it'll happen again. It's a, it's a fun conversation. I'm glad, as you'll hear in a second, it's something we've been waiting to do for quite a while. Enjoy. Yep. This is the one thing that you and I, Peter, we did a show together for, what, nine years? Yep. How many times did we say, if we could only get an official on the show <laughs> to give us some sort of insight? And every time we asked, we were told, eh, I don't know, that might not work. You know what happened, Pete? It took us what? both to not have to be kicked off a post game show. Yeah. To do our own podcast. <laughs> to finally, get the official. I love it. And like joining us. Uh, Carter, first and foremost, thank you for making a, a request that Pete and I have had for 10 years <laughs> finally happen because. We, we have no interest whatsoever in, you know, in, in beating up on, on calls or anything like that. But for the goodness no. of all things, the officials need to have some kind of a voice sometimes. Or, or is it a scenario where you're like, you know what, we take enough beating during the game from, you know, the mm-hmm. fan in the third row who thinks they're the smartest hockey fan in the world mm-hmm. to the kids and the coaches on the ice that just give you guys an earful? Yeah, well, it's actually, you know what, it's funny because there's a lot of People like even my buddies or some people that, you know, I'll, I'll be walking down, let's say walking down the street that I'll stop and say hi or because I know them and they always go into. So how is it you like being yelled at all the time? How is being an official? You know what I mean? And <laughs> and you do get those those people on on social media that, you know, will will ridicule you for every call you make or every every you know whistle you blow. But at the end of the day, you're out there for the integrity of the game. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to, to call a, call a game from the, from the couch and watch three, four replays and say, oh, well, he got that wrong, or I would have done this differently, but live speed. And when you're right in front of the game right there, it's, it's pretty tough to, you know, make the, make a, the right call right on time when you need it, how you need it type of thing. So I think a lot of people don't understand in that sense that, you know, on TV, I can watch it three, four times or, yep. you know, it's directly right in front of me. I got to blow that whistle and make a call in a split second. So I think a lot yep. of people, you know, miss, miss, misinterpret how officials do things because, you know, a lot of those people, you say, okay, you go ref a, a world junior tournament or you go ref in the American league or the OHL and you try to make some of these calls in this short amount of time that you have. And I'm sure you'd get some wrong too. So. And we're only human, you know, we make mistakes too, and we get that. But, uh, you know, if we're doing our job right, they, the people don't notice us. Now, for those who don't recognize, obviously, Carter was uh, recently involved with uh, the the excitement that was Western Canada with uh, with everything going on with the World Junior Hockey Championship. And uh, first and foremost, we, we like to joke off the top, but thanks for joining us. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, uh, thank you. It, it's nice, nice to have the mentality. I, I 
or the, the perspective, I guess, is what we're looking for, especially. But uh, first things first, before we get too far into things, uh, you, know, you know, Pete and I want to, I, I warned you beforehand, Pete will ask you questions about your dad and your OHL <laughs> career and all those side of things. And that's just how things work on our little show here. But um, obviously, uh, you know, first take us through what that experience was like uh, at the World Juniors this year. And kind of, uh, obviously, that's... Uh, you know, it's one of those interesting aspects, you know, when did you find out and what was the, you know, we'll, we'll ask you 27 questions about the entire yeah. thing, but in an overview aspect, how was it, what was it like? Yeah, you know what, it was, actually once COVID hit, you know, I was thinking, you know, obviously the seasons, uh, the OHL and American League, which I mostly work, they um, got shut down, um, you know, so I was kind of thinking for a couple months here, what am I going to do? I don't have a you know, I'm laid off right now. Technically, I don't have a job. Seasons aren't working. So I'm thinking, I'm like, well, what am I going to do? Blah, blah, blah. You know, a couple, uh, couple weeks after, you know, I was thinking, I think it was maybe around mid, mid no beginning of November, I want to say. Um, I got a call and uh, uh, asking if I'd uh, like to work the World Juniors. And obviously, if you were to tell me a couple um, a couple months before, I'm like, hey, you're going to rep in the World Juniors this year, I would have said, hey, you're full of it because everything that's going on, I didn't think it was going to be able to um, happen, you know, just because of uh, uh, COVID and everything. And I don't know how the, how it was going to work, bubble situation, stuff like that. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. And they're like, okay, we'll keep you posted. Um, you know, and I obviously, I, obviously that was a big, for me and my officiating career, that was a big uh, accomplishment right off the bat. Um, but at the end of the day, I kind of had in the back of my mind where, um, you know, this could still potentially fall through and not happen. Obviously, it's exciting for for me to get asked to do it. But at the same time, with uh, the virus going around and a couple of teams got uh, badly infected, that I was like, well, you know, I didn't know how they were going to do it or what it was going to be like. But, you know, it was awesome. The IHF treated us awesome. They took care of us. Um, you know, they made sure we were wearing our masks all the time when we got there, travel day, prior to travel, um, you know, they did their due diligence on uh, how they wanted to help us. And it was just all, you know, it was just from from me getting that call, you know, I, me playing in um, for Team Ontario in the under-17 tournament, my dad playing two World, cha uh, World Junior Championships, um, yeah. you know, it was, just, it was just that excitement of, hey, uh, you know, my dad went there. I'm going to go there now, not as a player, but as a, as an official. And it was really cool to to call him and tell him that. Yeah. He was, uh, one of, one of the two was in Hamilton and I covered it. Uh, yeah. And he, uh, he won a silver that year, I think, as we yeah. did this year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The year before he won a gold, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I forget where that tournament was. I think it was overseas somewhere, but yeah, he won. Yeah. A gold. But he won in Hamilton. Time. He won the silver. He won the silver yeah. medal. Yeah. I ran into a Czech reporter, by the way, at that Hamilton tournament, and I said that uh, Jimmy Sandlack, I don't know if he speaks Czech, but I know his parents yeah. are uh, are Czech, yeah. and and uh, she got a report uh, on oh, yeah. Jim. She got a quote from Jim. Yeah, she did. About, oh, wow. uh, That's cool. I don't know if he does speak Czechoslovakian or no, not. No, he doesn't speak any of that. English but do your grand me. did your grandparents? Um, I think you know, they weren't, they weren't fluid, but I think they, you know, it, it, certain phrases and certain, yeah, you know, yeah. dishes and stuff like that, they refer sure, to sure. it in e that language, but for the most part, it was just English. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let me see now. What was I going to ask? Oh yeah. You said the IIHF, they have their own rule book and it's a little different yeah. than the one mm -hmm. you're used to. What, what are some of the main differences? Um, the, the main differences for me, um, like there's just little little rules here and there. Like I, if you watch the gold medal game, I think it was in the first or I think it was in the first first period. I called uh, uh, a crease violation. Um, so you can't in double IHF rules you can't set it set your position up in the crease. So if you establish position in the crease, uh, the referee that's not allowed. Referee blows it. Face offs outside. Um, their reasoning behind it is they take a, a lot of, uh, you know, I want to say pride or, um, you know, in just just having it so it's so there's no disruption, whether that's goaltender interference, whether that is, you know, a deflection or incidental contact with the goalie versus a penalty versus a, just a stoppage, stuff like that. So it takes yeah. away 
um, from all the confusion in front of the net. So that was a, that was one uh, one one big one. Not that you don't have to get adjusted to, but one that I'm not no. used to. Yeah. Um, there's another in, in, in double IHF two um, for high sticking penalties. It's anything, even if it's a follow through on a shot pass, if you're coming down on a shot, um, anything, anything if the stick is, you know, basically hits a guy in the face, it's a penalty. They want you to be in control of your stick at the, at all times, which, you know, I'm, I'm a four. Um, I mean, there's certain situations where, you know, you can use your judgment on, um, but yeah. You know, just little rules like that that you, North American uh, hockey, you know, hasn't adopted, which, uh, you know, and a lot of people here or people watching don't, uh, you know, these little rules here and there. Why is that guy blowing the whistle? What's happening? Um, why is that a penalty? Why is it, you know, stuff like that. So, um, you know, they did, honestly, they did a great job with our meetings, refreshing us, you know, giving us information, the new information that we needed to know. And, um, you know, we just kind of ran with it as a group. Did you ever did you ever hear any complaints from any of the other delegations uh, that all of the officials were Canadian? Um, no, no, not so, not at all, really. Because um, at the end of the day, um, you know, we're the we know we know the fans aren't watching us up there. They're not flipping on TSN to say, "Hey, let's we'll watch ref guys referee hockey games." Right? They want to yeah, watch the yeah. game, so. Um, you know, we're out there for, you know, the integrity of the sport, the safety of the players yeah. and making sure it's fair. Um, so at the end of the day, you, you know, it doesn't really matter to us who wins or loses. It's, it's, was it a consistent game? Was it, um, you know, was it fair? Was it safe out there? And that's all you really got to, you know, uh, look at at the end of the day. Yeah. Now, I know you say that people weren't tuning in to watch the referees, but I, I will be remiss if I didn't say that a mic'd up referee to start a game after about the second game, all of a sudden everybody went, wait a second. There, yeah. some guys have a little something they're throwing into uh, the start yeah. of a game here. Uh, did, did, uh, was this kind of a, a whim thing or is this kind of something that maybe one of the guys said, well, wait a second, we got a mic on. So uh, maybe we'll, uh, we'll throw it, throw it a little personality sort of thing. We, we know we've seen uh, certain NHL referees get a little, yeah. uh, attention for it uh you know how did that come about or did everybody all of a sudden go oh we, we better have something ready to go here after i think well, once it became a thing on social yeah actually you know what it was for me personally i don't know about a lot of other guys but for me i always i'm a vocal guy out there i, I i'm talking all the time um so you know when i'm dropping pucks i always say something anyways um uh, it's just a little different with a mic on now. Everybody can pick it up and hear what you say. But um, for the most part, um, well, we were well, we were there. But I, I know for the most part, a lot of guys have the little, little, I don't know, saying or a little spiel before before the puck drop, just to you know make sure everybody's engaged, ready to go. And uh, but yeah, no, when they said, hey, we're gonna be wearing mics, um, you know, it was just it gives the gives fans and people. Um, on the outside, a, a perspective like, hey, we're humans too. We're not robots. You, you know, we like to have fun. That's why we play the game. That's why we officiate the game to have fun. So, you know, why not show that side? Yeah. So no, no West Macaulay, two minutes for, you know, a little fighting, the whole thing to go <laughs> no, on. No, see, West, yeah, see, West can, do, West can get away with that. So we're just going to leave that one to him. Uh, we, I know over the world juniors, we had, uh, what was the few of my favorites, uh, you know, keep it positive test negative. Uh, yeah. Santa was watching, uh, <laughs> I believe at one point there was a shake and bake reference. So, you know, it's not, sure. nothing wrong with that. They all spectrums. Yeah. Everybody had their own little, own little thing. Uh, Tyler, it, why did you get into refereeing in the first place? Um, you know what it was, I, you know, I honestly, at the beginning, I didn't, you know, playing, I didn't think it was a, was an option, you know? Um, didn't think, you know, playing and then officiating, going to officiating was, uh, was an option for me or anybody, right? I thought you had to, you know, start, start slow and work your way up like anything. But then, you know, once you get, uh, once you get your knowledge of the game and everything down, um, it just comes to you. But, uh, funny story was I was, I'm good buddies with, uh, Corey Sivret. Yep. We all work out together and stuff. Um, so yep. I, uh, my last year playing was his first year officiating. So, you know, I just called him to, uh, called him to be, be a buddy and say, Hey, how you doing? How you liking it type of thing. And, you know, he loved it. And 
you know, he's like, maybe this is something you need to think about. Um, you know, cause I had some injuries here and there and, uh, you know, some that didn't, didn't heal properly or whatnot, but, um, you know, I just thought I wanted to, once I was done playing, I wanted to stay in the game, whether that was at, at my, at the, at the time, whatever I thought was, was coaching, scouting, um, you know, anything, but I didn't think this was an option. And then, you know, I talked to Sivy, he said, give it a try, you know, so I did. I um, went to the NHL combine uh, for referees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's like a little training camp in the summer. And then, uh, you know, I signed a, signed a American league uh, deal as a referee um, from there. And then just, you know, kept at it, kept working at it and watched a lot of games and, um, you know, here I am. And it's, it's been, it's been awesome. Yeah, in, and, in, a, in a normal year. What uh, what is the life of an official like, especially when you say in a, does, do people realize because they, they, there's so much talk of uh, and not in a negative way, but, you know, uh, you know, players are riding the bus. And obviously, when you get to the NHL, it's planes and so on and so forth. But what's the uh, the, the life of an official like? Um, yeah, you know what? It's 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 a lot of travel, a lot of travel. Um and I know, you know, sitting in a car for five, six hours after a 7.30 game in, let's say, in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and you're, dry, you're, you're making your way home after that, driving five, six hours to your hotel to get a, you know, a couple hours sleep and then finish the drive home or finish, you know, your road trip if you're stopping on the way. Um, so it's a lot of late nights, a lot of driving. Um a lot of a lot of paperwork a lot of reports a lot of you know keeping track of your expenses and that stuff could get lost um but yeah you know it, it is kind of a little tough here and there when you get certain road trips and and certain um you know teams that are kind of spread apart where you uh, you, you might have a seven thirty game on saturday and then drive six hours and you know sleep sleep for a bit and then you have a game at two on on sunday afternoon yeah. um you know, so it's a lot, it is a lot of travel, um, where teams, you know, they kind of think that, uh, I think they think it out a little bit more where, okay, we're going here, we're staying for two, three games, or, you know, we're just around this hub city where, yeah. you know, we're, we're going all over the place. People are coming and going to, you know, let's say a team is playing a three and three. I, I might show up for the last two games or the first game, and then I'm out of there to somewhere else. Somebody else is coming in. So it's a lot of travel it can get a little hectic at times, but it's all. It's also a lot of fun, and also you're in charge of the game. You're not playing it. You're in exactly. charge. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you got to be fresh and uh, fresh and ready to go, all the time. That's right. Uh, in that same mentality sort of thing, uh, is there a situation kind of going back to, you mentioned kind of saying that during your playing days, you, you weren't thinking this was kind of a, an avenue to go sort of thing, but mm -hmm. going back to the, those playing days, obviously being in the junior night system, going through the OHL, how much do you feel now that, you know, you, you look at the, you know, especially the world juniors, for example, or even guys in the AHL, but I'm assuming, especially in the world juniors, you kind of sit there and kind of, uh, kind of go, I know exactly where you guys are at right now mentally sort of thing is it one of those things where you kind of uh it uh, pete will love this term ages you fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what and i think i think playing at a high level um helps that um you know for me if you for me refereeing a game I, if it gets intense if it gets emotional i understand that i totally get it i've been there i mean maybe not in world junior gold medal games but I've been there. I, I understand your frustration. I understand where you're coming from. Um, so, you know, it, and it is, it, it does help. I think that again, that I played at that level. So, you, you know, you know, when to calm things down, you know, when to, you know, maybe raise your voice a little bit, you know, tell somebody you've had enough, whatever, you know, it just kind of helps gauge situations a lot um, with people and, you know, in the game, whether, you know, a game needs a penalty, whether it's, you know, we can let a little bit more go type of thing, whether it's starting to heat up and you can, you can feel that emotion, um, you know, and I do think that, uh, you know, playing in the, in, in these leagues that I'm officiating now, I think it, uh, you know, only benefited me. Yeah. Do you know, uh, when you're going to start? Yeah. Do you have any idea when the season's going to get underway? I have no, I have no idea because the restrictions right now and um, cause before, you know, I, I'm traveling from 
I'm going from California to Texas to, uh, you know, uh, Philadelphia, anywhere, you know what I mean? But yep. um, so they said the, um, it, what I, what I've heard was the fourth or the fifth, I think, uh, I think the February 5th or six, something like that, the American leaves. Yeah. Um, hopefully, hopefully to start. Um, hopefully, the Canadian government allows the Canadian teams to to start playing, so you know I can get some work going. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, it's one thing for World Junior time, and I don't mean this in a negative way. It's one thing to officiate Austria versus you know, uh, you know uh, the lower ranked teams, and Pete will yep. complain nonstop about the fact that there's too many teams, and we'll we'll leave that for another day, but. Um, what you, you, you mentioned it, you're a couple years into this. At what point did they say, Hey, Carter, gold medal game? <laughs> well, <laughs> Is that their men- mentality? Because um, as I say, it's one thing for a round robin game where it's kind of yeah. one of those middle of the day games that maybe, you know, somebody, there were as many people watching as say a gold medal game between, oh, you know, Canada and the US. Yeah, yeah it was, uh, <laughs> it was, it was awesome. You know what? The, uh, the, I, I'll tell you what I was more nervous for the for the, my first for the first exhibit pre tournament game, and we were only doing one period because they had to cut back a bunch of uh, bunch of games due to teams getting infected and with COVID and stuff. So we were switching crews, so we would have a fresh four every period. So the first period it was the first game I had. I think it was USA and I forget Russia. who it was. Russia. Yeah, yeah, maybe was it? Yep. Yeah, they played so, Russia beat them. Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. So, so yeah, so doing games like that, you know, I was a lot nervous just because you didn't know what to expect. But and and it also has a little bit of a, a factor that you haven't worked since March either, right? So, mm. um, you know, you're skating and stuff still, but at the same time, you're not you're not you know accepting rushes or you're not moving in the corners with people or stuff like that. So, um, you know, I was a lot more nervous for that first game, but then once you know the tournament went on, I just kind I, uh, you know, did my thing and laid back and, you know, felt good and comfortable. Um, yeah. Did I think, did I think I was going to go to the gold medal game? No, just because, you know, there's a lot of talent there and uh, a lot of uh, high end referees, um, you know, I'm grateful for it. And it was an awesome experience and, you know, it's something obviously you'll remember for the rest of my your life. Uh, was there anybody who, and I, and I know you've said to us beforehand, there's certain things we can and can't talk about, but you're a, you're a hockey fan on top of being yeah. a referee. Was there any of the, the guys persp- particularly that were out there that, you know, as you're kind of on the ice with and watching games sort of thing that kind of, you know, stood out and impressed you with, with their skill kind of thing? Because you've obviously played with some of these guys yeah. that are right up there, you know, in your time playing as well. Who were the guys who kind of stood out uh, at the tournament this year? You know what? I think... Uh, obviously, if you if you watch the gold medal game, even if you watch a little bit of the tournament, you know Zegers, uh, you know him with the puck is just his vision out there. His puck, you know, his puck skills are at a, an elite level. Like it, it's just some of the stuff he's doing out there. I'm just watching. I'm like, whoa, um, you know. So he stood out. So did uh, you know Stutzel, um, Germany's captain. He he played a hell of a tournament. Um, considering, you know, they were down um, a lot of guys in the first couple of games. But, uh, you know, for a, for a team that didn't, you know, wasn't expected to, you know, go very far or whatever you, you want to call it, they, you know, the Germans, they played well. They battled back every game. Um, also, the, uh, you know, the Finnish captain, Lindell, um, Florida's got a good pick with them, uh, with him, sorry, I should say. You know, they just, the Finnish team, they just never gave up. They just battled every game and, you know, that's something you'll you'll love to see. Okay, I was I was letting Pete jump in there because I'll I'll ask questions for seven. <laughs> that, that's my way of going about things. So, um, take us through. You know, we, we like to not only talk about the topic of the day, but we like to get to obviously you know for those who do know and don't know sort of thing. Uh, you know, take us through the. Uh, you know, the, the, the playing career, because obviously you mentioned the fact that, uh, you know, obviously lengthy OHL career, some time in the pros sort of thing, um, you know, take us through when did, uh, and I always like to ask this to guys who are playing or have played sort of thing, when did, uh, when did hockey become ultra serious sort of thing? There, there's the time when it's just, you know, minor hockey with your buddies at uh, what point did it become a little more, you know what, I think I want to make this uh, the priority number one, or is it the fact that, Maybe there's some influence in the household that maybe uh, made it priority number one for an early act. Um, yeah, you know what? I I think, I th- and I I do think you know nowadays it's 
maybe not now, maybe, maybe three, four years ago where it was, where hockey was all business, business, business. Um, and a lot of people, the players, I want to say, and even coaches got, you know, a little tired of it. And my dad always used to tell me, Hey, remember, this is a, just a game. You're supposed to have fun. It's supposed to be fun. Yeah. You're getting paid to do it. Yeah. It's your job. But at the end of the day, if you're not loving it, then what's the point? And, you know, and that's something that my, you know, my dad told me, my brother, um, you know, early on in, in our lives was, um, you know, he's like, I don't care if you want to play hockey. I don't care if you want to play football. I don't care if you want to do nothing, do nothing and go to school. He's like, but as long as you, if you're doing that, you got to do it at a hundred percent. And, and I'll let you know when you're, when you're not giving it a hundred percent and oh boy, did he ever let us know, you know, <laughs> but you know, I, my last year of, uh, of minor hockey, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, the previous year, I think it was, what's that, Bantam now, I think. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I, I, my agent approached me that, you know, my longtime agent approached me. I had a tournament in Toronto, um, he, he, and he, he said, hey, you're, uh, I want to represent you. Um, I want to be your agent, blah, blah, blah. And at that time, I was like, okay, like, I don't know what kind of it means. You know what I mean? But then going mm-hmm. into my my draft year, my minor midget year, um, you know, it kind of really stuck out. Like, hey, this is this is this is it. I gotta this year is big year. I gotta you know play well every game, not just here and there. I gotta if I want to do this as a career and as a lifetime, lifelong, you know, job career, um, that uh, you know I gotta I gotta make something of it this year. And you know, I was fortunate to get drafted to the uh, Guelph Storm. And played there for, um, well, I think it was one and a half years, and then got traded to Belleville, finished, um, and then finished my OHL career in Plymouth. Um, after that, you know, I signed a uh, three-year entry level with uh, Carolina, um, was in the uh, American League for two years, um, and then uh, they didn't uh, they didn't renew my contracts. So I signed with uh, the Grand Rapids Griffins, so Detroit's farm team. Um, and then, uh, you know, I finished my last year in the East coast league and, uh, you know, call it, call it quits from there. At what point did you kind of, was it, did it go back to, you know, you, you're saying your dad said, no matter what you're doing, make sure you're having fun. Was it a scenario where you said, I don't want to say it, that it wasn't fun anymore. Cause obviously playing hockey is fun. You should be fun, but it, was it a scenario where you kind of said maybe, maybe there's something else or. Um, you know what? Yeah. So like I had, a. My last year playing in Carolina had a, you know, bad, bad hip surgery that, uh, you know, kind of, it didn't go the way I wanted it to, or the way I should have hoped, I, I should say the way I hoped it would, would go. Um, you know, so I, I, for me, I wasn't getting the best out of my body still. Um, I wasn't feeling very good, um, you know, physically, um, you know, those, those, those games where you're playing three and five or, or or, you know, four and six, um, those, those weeks were really, you know, sore on me. Um, by the end of it, I was barely, you know, practicing, just kind of trying to get my body ready enough to play, um, in the game. And then, you know, I just woke up one day and said, you know what, why am I doing this? I'm only going to hurt myself, you know, in the long run. Um, you know, so let's try to, for me, let's think of different options I can, I can go. So, and I just kind of snowballed from there, and then now we're here. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> uh, well, go ahead, Pete. No, I was just going to say, uh, uh, you're not the first guy that uh, I can uh, remember. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I forget who it was that said that uh, all of a sudden going to work uh, was a, a pain in the butt. You know, he, he didn't like the game anymore. It was, a, yeah. it was an effort to get, instead of being a game, as Jim said, uh, yeah. and, and having fun with it, it was a it was a pain in the butt, and and he yeah. didn't like doing it anymore, and he quit. Yeah, and and some people just you know some people just have that. Some people just wake up in the morning and said, "Hey, I, I love I I don't have the love for the game that I used to," or right. yep. you know, and and that's totally fine too. Some people you know develop that at different times, and you know that's fine. Yeah. 
how much did this kind of reignite the love of you know the game sort of thing is it the love of the game or is it just reignite a, a new challenge i know some people especially you know it's the it's still the kind of area of interest but at the same point it's just a a new learning experience new avenue that kind of thing yeah you know what i think i think playing i was a pretty detailed you know oriented guy when it came to when it came to hockey um you know i feel like um i know the game fairly well um and I don't know if it, I still have that, you know, I still have that fire and I still do. Um, but I think you said it, you said it right when you said, uh, you know, the new challenge and it is a new challenge. And, you, you know, now, I, now I'm looking at the game. I looked at the game as a player and now I'm looking at it as an official. And, you know, you got to, you know, as a player, you're a little bit, you have the blinders on a little bit rather than, you know, and as an official, you got to see everything. Um, and, you know, you got to see everything and know everything when it comes down to it, because, you know, when people have questions, they ask you, you're, you're running the game. So you have to know those questions and, uh, you know, answer them truthfully. And, um, you know, that was the biggest thing for me was uh, when I was transitioned over to an official was, uh, you know, the communication aspect of it, obviously, you know, I feel like I'm an approachable guy and people can, people can, you know, come talk to me, but it's, it's that comfort level of, you know, going to, going to a coach, you know, that's, 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 you know, fired up at you and yelling at you all game. And, mm-hmm. you know, for you to put that aside and go, you know, answer his question is, is something for me that I had to, you know, learn and develop how to, how to do it in the right way. What would Carter Sandlack, the official think of Carter Sandlack, the player? <laughs> oh, wow. I actually, I forgot that question. Um, that's a good or better, better still, what would he think of Jim Sandlack, the player? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I, for me as a player, I did play on the, uh, you know, on the on the edge, and sometimes I did cross that cross that that edge, and you know, for for me as as an official, I like to, you know, I'm more of, uh, you know, I don't I don't want to step in, I, like like I said again, nobody's there to watch me, so. Um, my job's player safety and you know if if you play inside the rules i'm gonna let you play but as long as you you play inside there so as soon as you step out i'm gonna gonna get you because you know uh, for me playing again i know i think i know all those you know little tricks here and there that players used to do or that even i used to do where you know you pull over you you pull up beside a guy and say hey i just saw that and then you know he looks at you and goes oh how'd you see that you know what i mean stuff like that so (laughs) Um, you know, for me, it, well, it, again, if I stepped over the edge, if I was officiating myself playing, you know, if I stepped over the edge, you have to give them the penalty, right? You bet. You bet. Uh, what were – obviously, you mentioned the, the time in the OHL sort of thing. Obviously, so some, some, some good years there sort of thing. What were the kind of the couple top memories from that time, or is it simply – I don't want to say it's the, the generic answer, but it, it, it seems yeah. to be for guys that play at that level. It's obviously the, the camaraderie of, of the guys you spend time with, but what are the kind of the few big memories from, from that time in the, in the playing career between first, yeah. if, first talk about junior and then kind of go uh, after junior. Yeah. You know what? Um, juniors, obviously, you know, my first couple of years was a little rough. Um, you know, obviously um, 16 years old, moving away. Um you know, you leave everybody behind um, to go start this unknown almost, right? Um, was a, you know, a, it took me probably two, two and a half years to get fully, fully, you know, immersed in the junior hockey kind of lifestyle, let's let's say. Um, but I know I remember my last year in Belleville, um, you know, we had a great, uh, we had a good team. We lost in the, uh, in the conference finals to Barry, who they had a really good team as well. Um, but that was probably the tight, tightest, you know, team I've been on. Um, you know, all the guys were great. We used to hang out all the time out, out outside the rink. Um, but, uh, you know, I had, I think, I, I think, I think signing through my last year of, uh, of junior were probably the best, you know, junior moment I've ever, you know, experienced. Cause you're still, you know, you're, you're 20 years old you didn't, you don't know if you can still do this or, you know, your time's winding down. Um, you know, I was getting, um, school offers, um, you, you know, to the rink and I kept, you know, throwing them out, like saying, Hey, I, I'm not going to school yet. 
type of thing. Um, and then, you know, the, the contract came across and it was all, it was one of the best days of my life. Uh, was it, I know we talked to a lot of guys that play, go junior to play pro sort of thing. How big was that trend? You mentioned, uh, you, especially in short periods too, right? You, you mm-hmm. transition from being a, a kid in high school to all of a sudden playing in a, you know, a different space sort of thing. You get used to that. Is it just a scenario where just as you get used to that aspect, now yeah, life changes again? Sort of. That's thing? exactly that's exactly it. Because you know you're you're a 20 year old, so you're you know top dog on your team or you know in a league type thing, um, and then you know you move up another league, and now you're at the bottom again, right? So, but it's a little yeah. different because now you're going to the rink, and, and people are going home to their families, their wives and children. You know, and I'm a 20 year old, 21 year old, and I'm like you know what's everybody doing type of thing and they're all going home because they got families to take care of and that was big you know big thing for me was you know getting adjusted to you know you were kind of a kid playing against bigger kids in junior but now you're you know you're still your 20 20 year old 21 year old playing against 30 35 year olds who've been doing this for 10 15 20 years and who you know and you're kind of like almost in shock like whoa what is this type of thing but it's almost the same you know when you're 16 going to the ohl you're kind of hit deer in the headlights type of thing and then when you're 20 going into pro again deer in the headlights type of thing so but you know it was awesome you learned a lot um learned a lot of stuff on guys with those guys and and hanging out with them um so you know again i wouldn't trade it for anything uh, aspirations from here, obviously you mentioned, you know, you, you, you didn't really have the, the world junior you know, on the map sort of thing. It was kind of, uh, you know, you've gone through the process to kind of, to be an official now kind of, where's the, you know, or you mentioned obviously Corey, is this a scenario where you're kind of saying, Hey buddy, I'm, I'm coming for you sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what? We train every day together. Um, so we're always, uh, you know, we're always joking back and forth, but yeah, you know, ultimately, um, the, you want to sign that NHL contract as an yeah. official, um, you know, that, that'd be the, that, you know what? And that was my goal at the beginning, uh, you, you know, sign a contract to be a NHL official, but, uh, um, you know, so I think just keep, keep working at it. Just keep, uh, for me, just keep working at it, keep work, uh, working hard in the gym and, um, you know, always, and that's what I say to my, say to my dad because he's like, you read your rule book way too much, and it's like, well, you can't you can't know your rule book too much, right? So, um, you know, just keep on that, and hopefully, you know, one day um, in the future. Yep. Uh, and then you know, just kind of finally to wrap it up, sort of thing. Uh, what, what's your you know that suggestion to a younger kid? I know it's a cliche question, but you know, to a younger version of yourself or to a kid who's you know. Uh, going through junior and kind of thinking, you know, is this an avenue sort of thing? Is this kind of part of the story you like to tell us that, hey, there there are options, kind of a plenty, because we hear about you know people going coaching and, and all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. uh, do people realize how much this is an, an avenue for, for players who are kind of have that ingrained knowledge already? Yeah, like I and yeah, like you said, like before, I didn't think this was an option. And I, I'm sure a lot of people don't. Um, but you know, to, to stay in the game and be a part of the game still, um, for me, that was the biggest, uh, the biggest thing for me. Like, I just didn't want to give up, uh, not give up, but I didn't want to, you know, just shut that hockey chapter of my life down. Do you know what I mean? I wanted to still stay involved. And, um, but yeah, like, I mean, for me, if you're, if you're looking and thinking that this isn't, this is not an option, that absolutely is an option. Um, it's it's a great option um you know you can't you can't play if you uh, and this is what i say actually so i said to some of my buddies um that you can referee longer than you can play so you know yeah. if you want to play till you're 30 35 great but you know i'll be still referee until hopefully till i'm 50 so you know it is an option it's an excellent option to stay in the game um to know the game different side of the game to to view the game from a you know a different lens you know and uh yeah it's i, I love it it's awesome it's great all right you, we'll, we'll, you've got it i'm sure you've got a, a dad question you want to throw it his way i mean i'm surprised you haven't thrown any more you made a couple references but i was expecting <laughs> five questions what about your father what's he up to these days 
He is doing a lot of fishing. Lot of, he still um, still works for the Anaheim Ducks. I think this is his. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is his fourteenth year or something, thirteenth or fourteenth, something like that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, he loves scouting. But actually, it's funny because I say, hey, like my dad. Uh, if I'm doing a OHL game here and there, and or he's working it type of thing, we'll just kind of go together type, you know. Hey, you want to go? Want to carpool to the game? <laughs> you can watch it, <laughs> and then I referee. So um, it's good. Well, he used guys. he used to keep me up to date on on what you were oh, doing. Yeah, when you were, yeah, yeah. When you were first starting out, hey, my kid's doing this. My kid's doing that. Yeah. Oh, and he was very excited about it too, and very happy for you. Yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's been a lot of help. Um, you know, even not knowing a lot of a lot of the officiating side of it, um, he's still obviously encouraging. And hey, you made this was a good call. I didn't like this call type of yep. thing. And then you're like, well, you know, but <laughs> but you're like, How yeah, much you still, you're still evaluating your game, even uh, exactly. you know, when you're you know a little kid sort of thing telling you on the way home how the game went. And I'm sure he's yep. still he's wa- he's watching an AHL feed during the year, going, hey, That's wait a right. second. Period yeah, there. Actually, and and so at the beginning of uh, my first year, he would watch the uh, he'd watch some of the games or watch the uh, box score. And you know, after the game, he'd call me. I mean, how many did you call or what did you call? And sometimes I'd say nothing, and he'd be like, "Well, what are you doing out there?" And it's like, Dad, sometimes you can have a great game and not call anything. Yeah, that's right. Sure. Sometimes sure, your non-calls are better than your your actual calls. Sure. Sure, I've I've known hockey games uh, to go a period without penalties because yeah. the kids the kids played it well. They played it by the book. Exactly, bar. exactly. Yeah, one thing he can't do is call you up and say, especially if you're doing a San Diego game, he can't kind of say, "What'd you think of so and so there?" He, <laughs> no, and uh, actually, he's been pretty good uh, when it comes to stuff like that. Um, I think he knows, and I kind of know, you know. Hey, let's just kind of let keep that separate, you know, because I still have a job to do. Um. And, you know, again, for me, I don't really care who's out there on the teams because, you know, and people don't realize that, you know, we get, we get, I should say, supervisors or, you know, scouts, basically, that come and watch the referees. And oh, yeah. Come oh, in yeah. After, come in, uh, yeah. Come in after the room with a whole bunch of notes and ask you, hey, what about this? At this time on the clock, why did you do this? At this, why did you do that? Type stuff like that. And I don't think a lot of people realize how, 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 how how much we break it down into into details i don't know the amount of times and i've uh whether i'm i'm doing play-by-play of junior b or stuff like that and my personal favorite thing is when either somebody rims a puck around and it ends up hitting an official and my favorite thing is when they yell get out of the way well, you've got to be on the <laughs> somewhere right like how frustrating is that and that's by you know puck hits you by instant or something like that and it's always somebody that just chirps you know oh he was in the way yeah. or whatever. like <laughs> there's so much space out here yeah well, exactly and you're part of the game out there so if it hits you it hits you you know what i mean it might be sometimes unfortunate but again like exactly if somebody's yelling at me get out of the way well where do you want me to go yeah you where know, am i pick, so- your, pick your head like lift your head i've been here the whole game you know so uh, stuff like that is it's kind of funny just to just to hear it's like well i don't know where you want me to go you're right beside me type of thing i'm trying to get out of the way obviously you know but yeah it's fun any any funny stories before we let you go of incidents that have happened throughout the uh, the last couple of years that you kind of say mm-hmm. you know that stick in the back of the mind or uh, you know you're sitting around maybe having a few beverages with the boys and uh reminiscing a story or two and say there was a game when i was uh was officiating such and such and all of a sudden i uh it wasn't looking i ran over the goalie he was a, and of course the well, goalie yeah. will be a position. well you know what funny funny story and it happened my first ever game so the first time i've ever officiated a hockey game it was the first game of the season in, in bakersfield i forget who they playing it was an american league hockey game and i had a supervisor at the game and i am absolutely the nerve i'm a nervous wreck i don't even know how to get dressed as a referee properly yet like you know so i'm just uh, hopefully i don't screw up out there um (laughs) you know so i'm skating around skating around and well i didn't recognize or i didn't know at the time the captain of bakersfield i played with he was my teammate in charlotte when i was in the american league keegan low so i'm skating around i'm just by the penalty block like 
nervous. I'm by myself. I don't know what to do. This is before the puck drops. And Losey comes over and he goes, hey, boys. Like, and I'm like, oh, hey, hey, Keegs, what's going on? And he starts skating away and had a double take. And he's like, looks at me and goes, Sandy? And I'm like, yeah, what's going on? Like, so he starts, he's like, I didn't know you were doing this. This is awesome. Like, you know, so to see his face light up was kind of cool and, and, and funny because I was just so nervous. And I think you can probably tell I was nervous. But uh, so it was awesome. Yeah. But we got through the game and good to go. No, uh, no situation where he kind of said, "Hey, wait, wait remember, we're, we're buddies. You got, you got to give us." The... <laughs> you got to give me Actually, a break. Yeah, there's a, I'm sure there's a, there's a few guys along the way yeah, that yeah, have uh, tried to pull that one, right? Hey, hey, give me, give me one, give me this, give me that. But <laughs> I'm like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been fun. Thanks so much for doing this, and uh, and uh, you know, keep us up to date. We we lo- we love yeah, to have awesome. people check in, and uh, obviously, when uh, when things get going, and uh, you know, this year, hopefully. Uh, love to hear what, uh, how things are going and what, uh, cause obviously everything's a little bit uh, different than yeah. I'm sure everything, yeah. uh, much like the world juniors, I'm sure the rest of, uh, you know, hockey from here on out will be a little bit different. And Pete and I, Pete, well, more so Pete, he'll yell about it. <laughs> yeah. And so thanks guys for having me. It was awesome. It was fun. Thanks awesome. a lot. Nice. Say hello to your dad for me. Will do. Thanks guys. Take care. <laughs>